One of the core concepts in our course is that we're invited to constantly investigate our motivations. One of the most challenging things for me to learn has been to see the difference between my intent and the impact of my actions. I can't tell you how many times in my life I have said or done something that harmed another person. We all have. And I happen to be a person who keenly feels the sting of harming someone. But for most of my life, I would respond with something along the lines of, I didn't mean to. The problem is, my intent is not more important than the impact of my actions. More bluntly, my feelings are not more important than other people's realities. Now I have learned a different response, mostly through doing uh, anti-racism work. When I hurt someone now, I say something like this. I am sorry for the impact of my actions. How did it impact you, and how can I make restitution? Nevertheless, my motivations for the practice of authentic allyship are important. They aren't more important than how my actions impact people. But our motivations for doing this work will help to shape our actions. What we perceive and what we don't, or what we won't perceive. In this session, we encourage you to spend some time preparing to share your why. Your own story is central to your motivation. I shared a bit about my story and my story of authentic allyship in the first session. I realized that the oppression of Muslims in this nation was important, and it galvanized me to action because I had had some experiences of being bullied as a kid and excluded. That pain gave me a beginning of compassion for my Muslim neighbors. There were other parts of my story and my identity that were also important. My role as a Lutheran pastor, our stated values, and wanting to behave differently than the German pastors in Nazi Germany. I also believe strongly in our aspirational constitutional values and that the only way to strengthen rights is to stand up for one another's rights. There are many powerful reasons why I've changed the course of my career to practice allyship with the Muslim community. And it's important for you to find yours and to celebrate them. Yet, we all know as human beings that we have many motivations for our actions. Not all of them are easy to recognize or acknowledge. Not all of them are healthy for us or helpful for others. In our first live session, we talked about some of what allyship is not. Let's look at some of them again. Allyship is not a search for purity. It is not a way to deal with guilt. It is not a way to deal with internalized shame. It is not about maintaining or increasing our status. It is not an inoculation from the benefits of our privilege. Sometimes we search for purity as allies. We pride ourselves on our pure thoughts and feelings about marginalized group. Our pride at our purity makes us feel superior to others. This creates resistance in other people and often harms the community that we are supposedly allying with. It often leads to inaction, as our goal is to be pure, not to make a difference. Sometimes we feel guilty about the caste system and the advantages we may have gained through it. It is okay to start out with some guilt, as it can motivate us to work for change. That's actually what guilt is for. But that motivation needs to be transformed into acting on the basis of love and relationship. Else, again, it makes our allyship all about us and our feelings, and not about effective responses and actions. Sometimes, we enter into allyship because we've experienced shame within the caste system, and that shame hurts. The caste system shames everyone or threatens to shame us if we don't live up to its standards and expectations. Again, it's okay to start out with some desire to work out this terrible feeling of shame and to act out of it in a way that's positive but this also quickly needs to be transformed into work to accept and value ourselves. If not, 
When we meet resistance, we quickly lose our energy. Sometimes we engage in allyship because we sense that the rules of the caste system are changing. We sense that the tables will be turned with black indigenous people of color on the top of the pyramid of the caste system. So we begin to hedge our bets to change and maintain our status, keeping one foot in the caste system and one foot with the oppressed group. The goal in allyship is to do away with the caste system altogether, not change who's on top of it. When we see how hard the work is with this motivation and how much we may risk with our in-groups, well, our motivation often fades away. Lastly, other times we want to use allyship as an inoculation against the idea that we've benefited from the caste system. This is often the point of what is called performative allyship. In other words, fake. Authentic allyship is not a magic eraser that takes all of our advantages that we may have gained from the caste system and makes them disappear. When the complexity and enormity of the caste system becomes more apparent to us, we who seek inoculation through our allyship often become inert. As I said uh, the other day, and I'll say it again now, I have found all of these motivations present in me at one time or another. In the end, they do not create the kind of energy that makes us effective allies. In the end, they turn allyship into a cover for something else. In the end, it turns people of color into tools for our feelings. As we do the work of authentic allyship, it's important for us to stay alert to our reactions to events, interactions, and our internal conversations. I have found that part of the work is to cultivate the durable and life-giving motivations while noticing and doing the work of healing required to set the other ones aside. It is not wrong to have these impulses, but they do not lead to authentic allyship. Allyship is about creating space for voices of people who have often not been heard. It's about them, not us or our feelings. If our motivations are about how we feel or about our status, we're not putting marginalized communities first we're putting ourselves first. This makes authentic allyship impossible from the very start. Authentic allyship means doing the work because it makes us truer to who we want to be and truer to who we are. Authentic allyship means doing the work to make the world as we together with others envision it. It means doing the work because that is the work that human beings do and do with joy. Work that offers meaning in the midst of the challenges and uncertainties of life and helps us move in the direction of mutuality and out of the caste system itself, which harms all of us.